Good morning to you. Mark Seth with HurricaneTrack.com here with your general hurricane outlook and discussion. It is Sunday, the 13th day of September. A real quick shout out to my mother. Today is her birthday, so happy birthday, Mom, back in New Bern, North Carolina. Uh, big day for her. I've been on hurricane missions before. Surprise, surprise, when you're born in mid-September like she was, I guess that'll happen. Um, so happy birthday to my mom back in New Bern, North Carolina. Uh, yeah, this is the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. We're going to take a look at Paulette, you know, the closest. I've already done a video about Sally, so if you're wondering where that is, that's also on my YouTube channel. I posted that just a little while ago. So we will emphasize what's going on with Paulette first, and then just a general look at the tropics overall. All right, so it's very busy out there, as you know, several systems. Uh, two depressions, one hurricane, one tropical storm, and two other areas of interest. And no surprise, we knew this was going to be a busy season, probably going all the way back to April. And we're now going to start catching up in the ACE department, the Accumulated Cyclone Energy. I know a lot of people have been hemming and hawing about that, that, oh, we've had lots of name storms, but not very many strong ones. Yeah, well, except for the 150 mile per hour hurricane that slammed into southwest Louisiana and the 100, uh, or I'm sorry, 90 mile an hour hurricane that, you know, came into Texas where not a lot of people live and the 85, 90 mile an hour hurricane that hit North Carolina. Yeah, it's been a pretty quiet season. Sure. Give me a break. I mean, I understand it's no 05, but, you know, that's like saying the Chicago Bulls you know, won five championships in a row or whatever, but they only scored an average of 78 points or whatever. I mean, anything, you can skew statistics any way you like it. And I think it's the impacts that really come down to it. A season like 2010, you know, you had a very high ACE score and hardly any impacts to the United States. But I digress. Uh, for those of you that look for ACE, it's coming. Don't worry. All right, for the rest of us, though, I mean, ACE is important, absolutely, but more important is the impact to people. Uh, ACE is for scientists, really, to, to measure what's happening with the energy expended and the impacts are what you and I generally are tracking. So here's Sally. I already went over that. Here's Paulette developing an eye right there. Kind of an unusual shape to it overall, but nevertheless, there it is. Here's tropical depression number 20. And uh, this is the leftovers of Renee. And you know what? I'm pretty sure if Renee was not here, TD20 would just keep barreling on to the west and would likely be a big threat to the islands. It's not impossible that it changes, and we see that happen. It's still several days east, but it's just interesting when you've got so much activity, it can affect things, you know, even uh, back upstream from where current systems are. Uh, and then another system with a high chance of developing. Very, very busy. We're going to run out of uh, traditional names. You know, there's only 21 names in the list of names. We don't use Q-U-X-Y-Z in the Atlantic Basin naming system. Uh, so the next system is going to be Teddy. And we're going to eventually hit Vicky and then Wilfred, Wilfred, whatever it is. And that's it. We'll go to the Greek alphabet uh, probably before we get to October. So... Uh, but I'm going to focus mainly on Paulette here since that's going to impact Bermuda directly. And I think it's easy to see where Bermuda is right there. I've got a couple friends in Bermuda. And, uh, you know, it's not a giant island with millions of people like, uh, well, Taiwan's not giant, but Taiwan has a lot of people over in the Pacific. So a typhoon hitting there is a really big deal. Japan, series of islands, millions of people. I get that. Bermuda, though, small target in the Atlantic, um, and it's made up of several islands, and yes, they're going to get impacted. And uh, I uh, was you know, hoping to be able to travel there this year, but if we had a, a hurricane threat, but because of the COVID-19 restrictions, I cannot. And, of course, I am needed on the Gulf Coast of the United States for Sally. Uh, so looking at the satellite here, then I'm going to talk about something that's actually really cool that we'll be able to share with you. Um, it's trying to get better organized. You can see a little bit of lightning associated with it in the overnight hours, mainly in the outer bands. Nothing lately in the lightning detection here coming off the GO-16 
works in the daytime and the nighttime. A little bit of a large increase in convection right there, kind of a uh, hot tower as people like to call it, a tall thunderstorm in the atmosphere. So what's going to happen, this is going to continue to strengthen, it looks like. I'm still holding on to my 125 mile per hour quote unquote bet that uh, this will reach 125 as it turns and goes across Bermuda, plus or minus five miles per hour. Um, it could, you know, the outflow is there, the water temperatures are warm. We will see what happens. Interesting tweet here from Michael Johnston in Bermuda. The Bermuda radar operational. And you can see there's Bermuda, very small here in the radar image. The core of the hurricane showing up, the extreme outer bands moving in. If you live in Bermuda, if you know Bermuda, you know those folks are ready for hurricanes, generally speaking. Their buildings are built solid. Uh, they're just, they take it more seriously or something. I don't know. I mean, as I was there for Gonzalo in 2014, which was approaching Bermuda as a Category 4 at the time, and people were ready. There was damage, absolutely. It's not like a Bermuda is impenetrable and is completely immune from hurricane impacts. No, of course they aren't. But they do a great job in bouncing back. They help each other. They were very helpful to me when I was there um, six years ago. So Bermuda's going to be fine. Even if the eye goes right over, they're going to be just fine. It'll be some power outages. Um, I've got a good friend. Well, I say a good friend. He's a great guy. I met him a couple times. Uh, he owns and runs the Swizzle Inn. Uh, and uh, I think his name, you say, Mark, he's a good friend of yours. Chick, I think is his name, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Korea, something like that. It's early for me, and I got a lot on my mind. Uh, I do know he under he uh, <laughs> can't talk. He is the owner of the Swizzle Inn. Okay, you swizzle in and swagger out, or something like that. Um, and uh, you know he's going to be great. They're all going to be great. It's going to be fine. They have dealt with hurricanes for a long time, long before we had the internet. Uh, but anyway, uh, another good friend of ours and a supporter of Hurricane Track. Uh, from the crowdfunding side and ideas and a bunch of other stuff is Howard Simons. He lives in Bermuda, and Howard has pressure sensors just like the ones that we have here in the United States, these little Kestrel drop sensors. And he has already placed three of them with friends and family around Bermuda. And so we're going to get pressure readings that he will gather when it's over and the Internet comes back. Uh, maybe it doesn't even go down. I mean, I'm telling you, Bermuda is pretty, pretty tough. So we're going to get some great pressure readings, and it's not like we're the only people that have that. There's the airport at Bermuda, the weather service, Michael Johnston, this guy on Twitter I'm showing you. But it's just neat that you know we'll have Howard to send us this data uh, back when it's all said and done. We can calibrate it based on elevation, and Brent, our buddy Brent down in the Virgin Islands, will put together some nice graphs. So we're going to get some meteorological data as Paulette moves over Bermuda. Uh, but in terms of the impacts to Bermuda, you know it already. High waves, and man, those are beautiful when they smash up against the rocks. Uh, I've seen it. I've been there. I've seen this stuff. Um, and, you know, they might be in the eye. Then the peepers will come out. There's little frogs. Um, they sound like little peepers. Thousands of them. They come out during the eye. It's pretty remarkable. So you're going to see some interesting video coming out of Bermuda as uh, Paulette approaches. But I'm not worried at all about their well-being because they they take hurricanes and uh, they roll with it. They really do. Not downplaying it. I'm just telling you the deal. Bermuda's got it going on. So let's look at the modeling here. This is the General Atlantic Basin, west coast of Africa. Over. Let's use blue just so it pops out better. Sound like Bob Ross. Just a little splash of blue there. <laughs> anyway, stay focused, Mark. So there's Africa, east coast of North America and Florida, etc. Uh, here's the islands, just to give you an example. And there is Bermuda right there. This is the ECMWF, the Euro for short. And these little blobs in here, there's Paulette, Rene, TD20, another area, what is it, 97L or something now maybe, and there is Sally. So there's all of your players on the field, so to speak. 24 hours out, there is Bermuda right there. So Paulette closing in on Bermuda. 
uh, 48 hours out, it seems like it goes over, very close to, whatever, going to have impacts. If the eye goes over, that will be kind of neat, honestly. It's an, it's an amazing thing to be in the eye of a hurricane. Um, and what else do you notice? Just for, you know, I didn't go over the models very much at all in the Sally update because it's not about the models, it's about the impact at the end of the day. But notice, it, just speaking of Sally, real quick, how the euro, this is the 850 millibar vorticity, does increase from 40, uh, from 24 to 48, and then 72, a marked increase. So it shows Sally strengthening the global model. A small tropical cyclone shows it strengthening. That's kind of attention getting, and that's all I'll say about that because I covered Sally already. We know there's going to be impacts. We'll focus in more on that, you know, throughout the day today and tomorrow, etc. So there's 72 hours notice too. Uh, this will eventually be Teddy, and um, this is could be uh, Vicky. There's another system here that could be uh, Wilfred, and then that's it. Names are all used up. Then we go to the Greek. Uh, but because Renee is sitting in here, kind of cutting the ridge down, knocking down those heights, look what happens with Teddy to be. It kind of pinwheels up and around. There's the energy from Renee right there. We'll see. I mean, this could get trapped, but I think that the energy here from Sally and this trough that's going to come through is going to pick up all this traffic and eventually send it out into the Atlantic. So after Sally and Paulette, hopefully no impacts for a while. Well, you know, you would hope there's nothing else the rest of the season, sure, but it looks pretty good going forward. This is 120 hours out, and you notice... There's Paulette in the North Atlantic after making that turn over Bermuda, etc. So this is going to really pile up those all-important ace points. And, you know, seriously, I get it. You know, there's a lot of names, and some entities are making a big deal about how many name storms that we've had and trying to make an agenda out of it. I understand that. I'm not doing that. I see, you know, yeah, there's a lot of name storms, and we haven't had numerous long-track powerful hurricanes yet. It's only September 13th, my mom's birthday. I already mentioned that. Seriously, we got a long way to go. And let's just revisit this in a week, shall we, in terms of the ACE, the accumulated cyclone energy. Um, that's going to be kind of high and above average again a week from now. You know, Paulette's going to add to it uh, for a day or two. Uh, Sally will, and then Teddy, to be, that's going to be a powerful hurricane as well. And so you'll have several systems going all at once. The accumulated cyclone energy is going to go up rather quickly. And before you know it, it'll be quite a bit above normal. All right? And it's only the mid part of September. Special shout out to Kari for continuing to make these updates, these graphics. We will refine them and find our happy center, so to speak, the best uh, look to the graphics, trying different things. I appreciate the fact that I don't have to do this. And it's not that I'm lazy. If you know how hard I work in the background, uh, and I'm not bragging or whatever, I'm just saying it's just great. I feel blessed and humbled that somebody from the United Kingdom uh, is willing to make, it's not, you know, it could be anywhere. <laughs> it could be in Antarctica, Australia. I'm just saying, Kari and, and her work to do this, I appreciate it. And it gives me time to focus on other stuff. Uh, so I tried the black and white behind the graphic there. Uh, and more of an Ansel Adams look, you know. So And I like the red, white, and blue. Very nice, very patriotic. So I appreciate it very much. And I also appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, and don't forget, I'll talk about this more later on as we address what we're going to be doing for Sally. But we are crowdfunded. Yeah, that's how all this works. Kari is one of our crowd funders from Patreon. And that's how you get to it. Patreon.com slash Hurricane Track. A lot of benefits to become a sustaining supporter of this project. Don't think of it as a subscription. Oh, it's a subscription. No, it is a movement. I mean, really, it's amazing what we're doing. And it's 100% crowdfunded. I mean, truly remarkable. An amazing story. I appreciate all of you. And that's how you get there. All right, I'll talk about it more tomorrow once we start setting stuff up. Then I can kind of show you again how we put what we do 
the funding that we get, what we do with it, how we put it to use. We'll go over that more tomorrow. All right, have a great rest of your Sunday. i got to get out of the hotel here in LaGrange, Georgia, and start the work for the day. As always, thanks for tuning in. I am Mark Sedeth, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll be live on YouTube, publicly available within a couple of hours. I'll talk to you then.